Welcome guys, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the CNC Q2. I'm gonna be going over why I chose to buy a completely different machine. Then we're gonna open the box and we're gonna see what's inside. I have yet to open it, I'm gonna open it with you guys. And then lastly, we're gonna try it out on some fake skin real quick, and then we're gonna put it to the ultimate test on some real skin. So if you guys are ready to do all that, then let's go. So before I even unbox this machine, I want to talk about why I even bought this machine. Now, most of you guys know that I use the Cheyenne Hawk Pen, and I've been using it for a while, and I really like it. I'm used to it, it's consistent, all those things that happen when you use something long enough. However, I know that you guys are looking for a decent machine, something that you can use now and carry yourself forward until the time comes where you're ready to buy whatever that you really, really want. So I put myself back in those shoes and I thought, okay, with a $200 budget, because I think that is much more manageable and reasonable than $600 plus dollars for um, like a Cheyenne or FK or whatnot. So with that $200 budget, I went out and I did as much research as I could and I really tried to find you guys the best machine I could within those parameters. And that's pretty much why I came up with the CNC short pen Q2. I really didn't even know it existed until I went out and started looking around and that's when I found it and that's when I did some research and realized that this might actually be something solid for you guys to really use now and then continue on with your career. The other reason why I decided to go and purchase this on my own was that I wanna give you guys the opportunity to do exactly what I'm doing, to watch my videos and duplicate what I'm doing. I know that that's not key for long term. You don't want to do exactly what I do. I encourage you not to do things better, do things different. But in the beginning, you're just looking for something to latch on to and go, OK, I'm going to follow this until I understand what's going on and I can try my own thing. So with this machine, assuming that I really like it and I do believe I should, we're going to move forward using that machine. So when I tattoo people, we're using that machine. I might not use it all 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 the time i will definitely still use my original equipment but i really think it's important that i show you guys how to tattoo with the same equipment that you will probably be able to get your hands on i've had this package all day now and i've just been waiting and holding on to it until now i want to open this with you guys on camera so let's get to that Here we go guys, let's open it up. Inside, there's a manual you can check out. I encourage you to read it. Also have an O-ring and a very small Allen wrench. And there she is, wow. Wow. This thing is tiny. This thing is tiny. It's crazy. That's the machine, and underneath here, if we peel this up, I would assume there's more stuff. God, boy. They got their dimensions very accurate when it came to packaging. Ugh. All right, underneath the giant chunk of foam, another piece of foam, and inside that box, it appears to be a, another box with a clip cord. This is a very thin clip cord guys um in fact i've actually never seen one this small i'm sure it works i'm just not sure how well or how long it will work but there you have it again like i said pretty small pretty thin not to say that that's all bad just doesn't seem all good and if we unscrew this ah we got a nice little click 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 very nice and clicky as you would assume click 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 and now we take it all the way off. And if we open it up just a little bit further, there you have it guys. That is what is inside your machine. You can break this thing all the way down. It's very simplistic. Well, there you have it guys. It is quite small, remarkably small. We're gonna compare it real quick to my current operation. I wanna get my battery in here. I just wanna hear it real quick before we move on and start testing this puppy out. So for a little comparison guys, this is the Q2, this is the Cheyenne, 
it might not look like a lot, but it is quite a difference. In fact, I would look forward to seeing how this feels tattooing with such a small machine. I do kind of get used to the length on this and the way it fits in my hand. However, again, trying new things. I'm excited. I look forward to giving this guy a go. So let's go ahead and take that wireless battery pack that I usually always use and plug it into this. Oh yeah, it's got a nice click. That clicks in hard. That clicks in solid. I like that. I put gloves on because it's just weird for me holding the machine without gloves. I just feel like I'm doing something wrong. So anyhow, gloves are back on. Cartridge, nine round, tight liner, clicks right in. Yeah, got a nice little click. Put the same battery with the same voltage in both machines, and I just want to hear how it sounds. After listening to both, I would say that the Cheyenne does sound a little bit smoother. I don't know if that has any impact on how the machine performs. All right, guys, according to the website, the CNC short pen has a 35 millimeter aluminum sleeve, a German Fall Harbor motor. The Hawkeen hybrid tattoo pen is designed to give you the closest feeling to the actual pen, according to the website. The machine features a powerful motor and an exquisite appearance, lightweight and super stable. I picked this machine up for $169.99 from Amazon. I'll have a link in the description if you want to check it out. The website says again the operating voltage from 5 to 10 volts. The max operating voltage is 10 volts. Don't run it higher than that or you'll overheat the motor and cause mechanical wear. They also promise an 100% satisfaction experience. They say contact them with any inquiries and they'll respond promptly. Is any of this true? I have no idea right now. But that's what they're saying and we're going to find out. After doing all this first impression stuff, it is now time to put this stuff on some fake skin, give it a quick run today. I want to get a general idea how this machine feels. And that way you guys can make the best decision moving forward, whether this is something that you want to get. I'm going to glove up and we're going to run some lines and do a little shading and see what we have to work with on the good old practice skin. So let's do that. Gloves. All right, guys, I've got loaded up here a nine round liner. I currently have it at 8.4 volts and we're going to dip into some black ink and just run some lines and see how it feels. See if I can hone in where I want to be. All right. With a little bit of A and D or Vaseline, whatever it is you're using. Actually, I'm just going to work down here in the corner. Okay guys, there's a line, actually not too bad at 8.4 volts. Let's try a little bit more. I have found that A and D takes the ink off the practice skin the best. Not to say that it even does an amazing job, but it does far better than green soap, in my opinion. Okay, this one I tried to go a little bit faster. I'm gonna move even faster here and see if we can see the difference in running 8.4 volts at a nice slow, consistent pace, a little bit faster. Now I'm gonna run this one even faster. Not too bad, but I can still tell that my hand is moving too fast for the voltage I have selected. So if I wanted to move my hand that fast, I would just turn up the voltage a little bit. I definitely think that 8.4 volts for me is gonna be a great place to start with this machine with my hand speed. Now, that's going off a of practice skin. 
Until I get on real skin, I won't know for sure if that's the exact voltage that I want to run. But for now, in this practice setup, 8.4 volts seems good for me. I'm going to put in a magnum here and we're going to do a little bit of shading and see how that works. Alright guys, we currently have a 23 bug pin needle cartridge in our machine. And I'm going to drop that down to 7.5 volts for now and see how that works for shading. Now I'm only using black here. I just have black so I'm going to rely on my hand to make that gradation happen. Let's see what happens. And there is a pretty basic gradation. I kind of think I should speed up the needles just a little bit, but until I get a bit more practice with this, I'm not gonna know my exact voltage that I prefer as a starting point. So a great way to get comfortable with your machine is to just get a little practice skin, run some lines, shade a little bit, and then lay yourself down a stencil and give it a go. But I'm not gonna stop there. I'm gonna bust out the old trusty leg and we're gonna run a few lines and see how it goes on real skin. I wanna make sure you guys are well educated before you make a purchase. So let's get to that. As you can see guys, I already started some lining, so let's continue that.
So I want to save a little lining for another time in case there's something else we want to go over. We have the rest of that flower to work on. And we can shade it and do all kinds of other stuff. But I figured that was enough to tell me that this machine is decent for lining. I actually really liked it. When it comes to shading, I'm gonna have to practice a little bit more with it. I only did that on the fake skin and I didn't really get to it too much on my leg. But moving forward, I'm gonna be using this machine and I'll let you guys know more and more as I go how I feel about it. But as of right now, it's a solid machine and I'm happy with it. And I hope to stay happy about it. So if you guys enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. I put some videos over here that might help you guys out while you're going along. And if you haven't already, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when I post. And until next time, guys, peace.